Um, hi. Everything has a season, everything has a time. Show me a reason and I'll soon show you a rock. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> you seen Pippin? No. Watched Pippin yesterday. That's from Pippin. Huh. I believe that's the opening song from Pippin. Yeah, no, I've never seen it. It's, pretty, it's very horny. <clears throat> Horny? Yeah. Oh, it's by a St- uh, Stephen Schwartz was the composer. Um, he's the composer for Godspell. Oh, okay, okay. Um, I, I like the music in Godspell. I just the music in this one was pretty good, too. The main character is this guy named Pippin, but even more so, the main character is this guy named the leading... He's, like, the leading player, mm-hmm. and he he's pretty much the narrator of the story. And it's by the same guy who did the original Broadway run, uh, where he played Judas in Jesus Christ Superstar in the oh, in the Broadway uh, version. Bob Vereen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's pretty good. He's, yeah, he's he's fantastic. Um, I've, I've, they have uh, Jesus Christ Superstar like the Broadway record out, but okay. it's only got like select songs from it. It's not like the whole album. That's annoying. Kind of lame, but um, yeah, I've heard his like rendition of like Heaven on Their Minds and stuff, and he's really good. <laughs> Cool. Uh, anyway, welcome to the first podcast that we recorded in the new year. Yes. The second one coming out, obviously. Um, it's it's the 6th of January, and yeah. we both watched a ton of movies. We did. Like, Thomas, like, actually watched, like, more than, I think, like, five this week? Yeah. I that wasn't in the podcast? I think it was around five, maybe six that weren't in the podcast. Let, let's see if I can say all of them. Um, uh, what is, is it called Last Black Man in San Francisco? Mm-hmm. That one. Uh, a movie called Low Tide. Yeah. With the guy from uh, It. Yeah, he plays Bill. Yeah. Um, oh, you watched Enemy by Denis Villeneuve. I did. That's that was a good the last movie. One I watched. It was a really good movie. Yeah. I really enjoyed that. It was, one. And then the end, it was like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, um, I thought it was great though. I really, yeah, I'm a fan of the ending too. So, so am I. Um, yeah, no, I I really enjoyed it. Mm, I, it seems that my computer's not plugged in. Hold on. Oh no! Okay, what else did you watch, Thomas? Um, I watched. Yeah, so I watched those. Ooh. I watched uh, Marriage Story. Oh yes, of course. Um, which was. Yeah, that's probably my favorite movie out of everything I've watched this week. Um, is that one of your top from last year now? I think I think it might be the top. Mm-hmm. I think it, I think it pegged down the White House down to number two, which would like leave Parasite at number two. Somebody sit in my chair, ruin my sleep. Do you understand what I'm saying about that scene now? Yeah, it, yeah. it, it is very fitting. Seeing his character is the theater director and. The themes of the song are, like, very in tune with the movie. I didn't realize, but the the song right before that, that Scar, Scar Jo and her family sing, mm-hmm. that's also from Company. Oh, okay. So that also was a cool mirror that they're still interconnected. Um, I downloaded um, the, uh, like, one that has... Uh, Neil Patrick Harris. And, okay, cool. Uh, that's the one we like watched. Stephen Colbert and all that. I was going to... Send you where I watched it, but, like, the audio quality was pretty bad. Hmm. Uh, I was lucky to find uh, a little something for it. Oh, so. nice. A little something. A little something. Uh, then I watched uh, The Irishman by Martin Scorsese. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed that one. I gave it, like, a 7 on my initial yeah. watch, but I'm going to bump it up to an 8. Because thinking about it, I, it was pretty good. I enjoyed it a lot more than I think I did. It just How, how, how lengthy did it feel? Um... I, I watched it in, like, two halves, so okay. I, I cheated a bit, but it, it honestly didn't feel that long. Um, not not too much longer than any other typical Scorsese movie, Yeah, because um, his movies are typically pretty long. Yeah, um, I feel like they're at least two and a half, usually. Yeah, it's not, like, as, uh, like, I think his other film that's of, like, major comparative length of recent memories, like Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah, because that was like three hours and like five minutes, right? Or something like yeah. that around there. Uh, this movie has a lot more like slower moments. It likes to breathe a lot. Uh-huh. Um, so it's not as like quickly paced as Wolf of Wall Street was, but yeah, no, I, I really enjoyed it. 
Um, de-aging effects were really good, and so were all the performances, so... Cool! Um, <laughs> Did you see uh, Robert De Niro, I think it was yesterday at the Golden Globes or whatever, he's like, now that we have this technology, this just means I can play any age. Yeah. <laughs> so if anyone wants to remake The Wizard of Oz, I think I'd make a killer Dorothy. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> um... Uh, was there anything else I watched? Let me pull up my letterbox. I think there was one more, but I just can't think of that. Let me see. Outside. Oh, yeah, and then I watched uh, The Caden with uh, oh, yeah. Timothy uh, and Chalamet. It was, it was and pretty good. Robert Pattinson. I thought it was pretty good, yeah. Um, I've seen, like, a lot of, like, negativity around the film because it's, like historical inaccuracies, but it's more based off the Shakespeare. It's like yeah. a blend of the Shakespeare play mixed with a bit of history, kind of creating, like, this weird middle ground. That's kind of cool. But, yeah, no. I heard that the, like, there's, like, one big, like, the big battle scenes are really, really done, well done. I, I thought so. Um, and, yeah, Robert Pattinson's in the movie, and he has, like, really long hair, and yeah. it's pretty amazing. And he has that amazing French accent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. From what I'm told, that's actually pretty accurate for, like, somebody trying to... Like, a French person trying to speak another way. Yeah, it, it sounded like... I mean, I wouldn't know personally, but it sounded a lot more, uh, like, in tune with what I've heard from, like, movies and stuff from, yeah. like, France. Um, there, there was a couple little minor bits where his dialect would slip a little bit, but... Um, for the most part, it was very well held together. Cool. Very cool. Yes. Um, so I... The Grudge just came out, the new one. Yes. Terrible movie. But in preparation, I was like, well, I haven't seen any of the other ones. So that day, I watched the, the original The Grudge. So Ju owned The Grudge 1 and 2. Mm-hmm. And I watched the American The Grudge 1 and 2. Yeah. And I didn't like any of them. <laughs> I thought that the first two Jewel and the Grudges were okay. Yeah. But, um, and then the American one was god-awful. And then the second American one was even worse. Yeah. <laughs> like, I hated the new Grudge, but at least it was a little better than those, so, in my opinion. Probably because I like John Cho. <laughs> yeah. Um, I... We talked about this a little bit before you had watched the American ones the day that you were, like, watching through them. Mm-hmm. Um, is the second American one, like, a direct remake of the second Japanese one? Or no, is it, it just no, like it's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty, like, different, I would say. Okay. Um, because I remember that's, that's the one that begins with, like, yeah, it's, it's actually. the closet and it's, like, the middle school girls or whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They, yeah, they have a whole different plot in Chicago. Yeah, yeah they, it's completely different, actually. But they do take a lot of inspiration. That, and I didn't know this. They took take a lot of inspiration from uh, the first film in the Juon franchise, which is Juon the Curse. Okay. Which uh, he did Juon the Curse 1 and 2 as TV movies and then kind of remade them, but kind of just made sequels to them with The Grudge. And are Juon 1 and 2, they don't have, like... The grudge characters in it? No, Ka- Kayako and uh, Toshio are still in there. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, at least I'm... Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yes, they are. Um, and they're kind of the prequels. It's just... The whole franchise is kind of just a mess. Yeah. And I'm like, how did they do it? It's the same guy, Takashi Shimizu, I believe his name is. And he just, like, fucking... I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? He changes the rules on his ghosts all the time. And I was like, ah! Yeah. And it's just like... I, I watched uh, Ringu yesterday as yeah. well. And that blew my mind. Yeah, I, I read your... It, it, it probably blew my mind more than it blows most people's minds. But I really, really enjoyed it. And it's just so hard to, like, watch those two without drawing parallels. Like, The Grudge was... Ringu was based on a book in 91. Yeah. And The Grudge was came out... Well, the first... Uh, Jewel and the Curse came out in 2000. And it just feels like such a ripoff of the, like, of Ring. Yeah, um, 
Oh, like, especially over here in the West, it's really easy for us to draw parallels, because both of them were, like, the big, like, because I think it was Rain that got adapted first, but the re- American remake to that was, like, really successful over here. So yeah, started, no, that's, that's, that that's a big thing. the trend it, yeah. of the American remakes. Like, I remember... There was, like... Did you, eight. <laughs> did you ever see, uh, like, Shudder? I've seen the original Shudder, and I really did not like it. Um, uh, I have not seen the American one yet. I think I've seen the American one. Um, it, it's really hard to tell because I don't ever remember, like, the people characters. I always remember the ghosts, and they always keep the ghosts Asian in those movies. Mm-hmm. So, so I just, like, I was expecting, I'm, I'm like, uh, I want to say that is the original Shutter, I want to say it's like Indonesian or it's. I, I don't remember oh, okay. where it's from, but... So I probably watched The American. Um, but I, I watched it expecting to really like it, because apparently, like, a bunch of people I know said it's really good, and then I watched it, I'm like, this is terrible! What about, um, uh, One Missed Call? Was that, like, uh... Um, that was originally, I think, a Japanese film. Um, oh, actually, it's by somebody I know. Hold on. Okay. I, I remember, uh, watching the, uh... I don't know if they ever did any sequels, but I remember watching, like, the one that came out over here for it. Oh, yeah. The original One Missed Call, the Japanese version, is by uh, Takashi Miike. Oh, okay. Huh. Um, looks like... I wonder if that one's actually any good. I haven't... I've heard it's good. Um, I remember I saw the American one... And I remember liking it, but I was also like ten. Yeah, I was around. You know, I was like, "That was so scary." Uh, yeah. Looks like there were three, like originally in Japan. Uh, okay, but then they did. Uh, I think there was like "Let the Right One In." There was a bunch of "Let the Right ones. One In" is a uh, Swedish. I, I just mean like the American oh, re- American, like, American remakes from, the, from the Ring. Pretty much started all. Yeah. Right? Which. Um. I think is why some people kind of look down on it now, because it's like, oh, it, bo- it destroyed everything. But I'm like, that's not its fault. Yeah. You know, obviously it got very popular for a good reason. Yep. Um, so I watched that. But before I did watch um, the two Jewel and the Curse films. And the first one, I that's the first Jewel and the Curse film is the only one I've given higher than a five in the series so far. Uh-huh. I gave it a six. Oh, but nice. then the second The Curse film, so both of them are about 70 minutes long. They're barely over an hour. Oh, that's The funny. second Jewel and the Curse film. It feels like it's like two hours, right? The first half of it is the last half of the first film. Oh, it's one of those they read. They literally just pop it like the entire like first 30 minutes is stuff I've already seen. It's like, uh, and then the rest was just garbage anyway, and I'm like, well, that wasn't worth it. At yeah, all. it's like a uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night two. They do the same thing with that movie, mm. but that movie was only meant to be like, like kind of like what they did with like Deadpool's Christmas movie or whatever, where it's like they like add shots yeah. of new footage, and we're intending on like doing like a edited down version of the first one. But they shot, like, a little too much footage, so they ended up, like, just doing, like, the first half as a remake and the second half as a actual, like, new movie. Yeah. Um, Garbage day! Garbage day! Uh, And then I watched Jewel and White Ghost, because there was, in 2009, they did, like, a dual release for White Ghost, Black Ghost, and they're both an hour each. White Ghost was decent. Okay. It had some really good moments in it, like the beginning and the ending I really liked, and the middle was just like, eh. Mm-hmm. The main ghost in it is holding a basketball. Ah. Like, it's like an old lady with a basketball. And oh. I'm just like, why? You think she died on the court? <laughs> it shows how she <laughs> dies. Oh, okay. And she has a basketball. And I'm like, okay, I get it, but I'm just like, wouldn't it be more menacing if she was just, like, gripping something that wasn't there? Like, if you just, instead we just see this, like, old woman as a ghost with, like, all white, and she just has a bright orange basketball, and she runs at you like, Wah! Yeah. It's like, why? Get rid of the basketball! Yeah, or take it from her and make that hoop. <laughs> oh... Um, let's see. Did I watch anything? Of course, I rewatched a Serbian film. That was the first thing yeah. I watched this year. And that was great. 
Uh, oh, I, I watched Fiddler on the Roof. I remember oh, yeah. the last podcast we talked about it. I'm like, I need to watch it soon. And I did. Amazing. I loved it. It's like top tier. Yeah, no. I loved I, it. It's a great adaptation. I've got... Um, I've got like one of those. You remember like when VHS set, sets used to come with like the so long it's on two tapes or it would come with like two copies. Yeah, I have one of those for that movie. Nice. So it's like nice and it's in pretty good condition. So, well, let's pop it in right now. Oh, where's your VCR? Where's your tape? It's at my house with my VCR. Well, then let's get the podcast on the road. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that'd be kind of fun. <laughs> Oh, it's like Jordan's like dream podcast. He's like, oh, I just need to take a mic out on the road. On the road. Stop! Like, get into a car crash. Yeah, of course. Genius. Yeah, so that's mostly what I watched. Um, I caught up with the show This Is Us that I'm a big fan mm. of. Uh, I was down behind like three episodes. And I watched uh, a little bit of the Batman animated series this morning. The, the 90s, 90s one? one? Yeah, because I hadn't seen it. It's good. Um, yeah. I've seen, like, I just bits watched, and I think, pieces the first throughout episode. all of it. And I've got, like, the first season. And I've seen, uh, like, I think I've seen the entirety of the first season. Um, I was planning on, like, doing, like, a full, like, chronological watch through, like, a few years ago. But I didn't end up finishing it. But I need to at some point. Good show. I like a lot of the episodes I've seen. Yeah. Okay. Are we time for... T- ready? For... Are we ready for the time? Question time? Yeah. Boo-boo. And the only questions today come from Pierre. <laughs> I wish you two a happy new year. You're my third favorite podcast, but don't worry, you're the only one I send mail to. Oh, well, Thanks. Do you prefer the antagonist of a horror film to be supernatural or grounded by reality? I find the supernatural to be more scary because it plays by different rules and cannot be uh, thrown easily. Mm. Um, so, ah, this is a bit of a loaded question for me because, um, I mean, if I look at it through the lens of if I was there... Because that's really the only way that I get, like, scared by films. I'm not, like, one who gets unnerved very easily. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, like, the occasional thing where I'm like, oh, that's the, like, what they did with, like, the editing and everything in the scene might, like, kind of, like, put me off. Like, David Lynch has some, like, pretty unsettling, um, like, vocal effects he'll add yeah. like, with echoes and stuff that might, like, kind of, like, oh, I'm kind of getting, like, s- some chills right I'm now. a little nervous here. But, um... Generally, I tend to be more willing to put myself in the situation if it's a grounded situation. So, and then I'm thinking, like, what would I do in this situation? This, this, that. Whereas if it's a supernatural situation, it's like, well, I'm just kind of, like, fucked. So I probably just, like, give up. Die. Which kind of, like, takes out my will to live, which takes out my fear. So... At least I can be on the edge of my seat with, like, serial killer movies and be like, oh, yeah, you can do this. You can get out of there. And if it, like, goes wrong or something, it leaves me a lot more invested. I feel like... (sighs) This is also hard for me. Because, like, I feel like it's harder to watch. It's harder to write a film with compelling characters when there's, like, someone in reality, like a serial killer. Because then it's easier to, like, be like, well, that was a dumb mistake. Yeah. And it's fine for characters to make mistakes, but when it's too dumb, it's like, oh, that's aggravating, you know? Yeah. I like, think I want human mistakes, but with a human antagonist, it's easier to be like, well, why aren't they just fucking doing anything? With a supernatural thing, it's like, well, it can't do anything. Mm-hmm. But also, I just... I feel like I l- like the idea of a human antagonist more, but I like a lot of... Some of my favorite horror films have a supernatural one. Yeah, like, I like supernatural horror movies, too. Like, some of my favorite are, like... I like The Thing, which is... I mean, that kind of, that's well, kind of like a... Terrestrial. Extra which is, terrestrial. That, which. I think, would go in the same, like, scenario. Non-human. Yeah, be, beyond uh, human understanding yeah. in that kind of category. A goop monster. Um, but, um, 
Oh fuck! I completely lost my train of thought there. Oh yeah, like I like like The Exorcist and shit like that too. Um, I don't know. It just depends. It works for different movies. Yeah. Depends on what they're going for. Thanks, um, Pierre, for the question. Yeah, thanks. Do you consider a muffin to be cake or bread? Uh, also, cupcakes, which are mini cakes, are not muffins. I mean, I feel like cupcakes and muffins are like the same thing, but just like one with frosting. <laughs> yeah, different type of flour. So, is a muffin a cake or bread? Why can't it be both? Yeah, I, I feel like it doesn't really fall into either category. It's like this middle ground. Yeah. It's a whole separate category. With the creation of a muffin, they created a new idea. Yeah. It's not quite a loaf of bread, but it's not quite like a cake. But I, I guess if I was... I guess it's closer to bread than cake, in my opinion. Yeah. If I had to choose one. But it's its own. I don't know. I, it kind of reminds me of, like, a loaf of, like, pumpkin bread or banana bread. Something in that vein. I could see, like, being like a muffin. Okay, move on to your Would you consider Eraserhead a horror movie? I think it's so bad, it's scary. Got him! Um, I think... I it, would consider it a horror movie. I would consider horror one of its genres. I'd yeah. say it's a multi-genre yeah, movie. Yeah, no, I would, I would agree. Um, definitely has the horror elements in there, for sure. Eraserhead, it's back. Thank you for the questions, Pierre, as yes, always. Thank you. You're our biggest fan. Specifically, E10's biggest fan. All right. You got a movie idea for us, Thomas? Yeah, I do. Wow, okay. Um, okay. So it's called The Elementary School Teacher. And it follows this elementary school teacher. I know, big surprise. But, um, so he's teaching this class and he gets a new student. And this, like, kid is, like, really, really smart. So the teacher, like, takes, like, a shining to him. He's like, oh. You know, this kid's, like, too smart to be in this class. He should be, like, moved up a grade or two. And he, like, kind of tries to communicate with the kid, but the kid's, like, very, uh, just won't talk to him very much until one day he stays, like, in from recess and, like, talks to the teacher. And he's like, look, I'm not going to tell you how this happened, but I'm actually a 45-year-old man reincarnated into my life. And you ruined my last life. So I'm going to ruin your life. And he's basically just like gaslighting this teacher. And it's like left up to interpretation, whether it's like this is an actual kid who's just pretty intelligent or if it's actually like a grown man in his like childhood body. And uh, he starts kind of like talking to the other kids and getting them in this like cult like mind. And he plans on having, like, all of the uh, elementary schoolers kill this teacher in a mobbish fashion. Oh. And, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Weird zany idea I thought of. There was a short film I watched from some Eastern European country, I believe, where this, like, lady was teaching, like, middle school and she was going like crazy and she kept seeing these kids as demons and it was like, are they real or not? And I think the end of the movie, she like shoots a kid to the head. Oh. It was pretty brutal. Or at least I think she holds him at like gunpoint. Uh-huh. It was pretty decent, I believe, if I remember correctly. It was a while ago. It was like a year ago. Hmm. Okay, here's my idea. Um, it's about a man who keeps having a recurring dream where he like the dream starts with him with, like, holding a knife inside of his wife. Like, he had just stabbed her. And the dream, like, will go on for a long time where he, like, gets arrested and gets thrown in a mental institution. And they talk about how he's like, no, this is a dream, this is a dream. And he keeps waking up from it and everything seems fine. But he keeps going back to the same area and he keeps going back to, into the same mental hospital. And it's just like, is is he just stuck in this mental hospital living through the same loop? Mm. And uh, that's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> Something happens. <laughs> or maybe or maybe nothing happens. It just keeps doing that and then it just ends. <laughs> Seems like the appropriate route to go. 
that maybe each time something a little more realistic happens and then the end it just it feels real and then it, he like shuts his eyes he shuts his eyes as if he's gonna wake up again and then he opens his eyes he's in the same room and that cuts black boom oh genius there you go spoiler alert for this Shh. movie that's never gonna be made fuck let's what? make all of the movies we've put I think uh <laughs> there's been like 48 ideas <laughs> Oh shit, I guess it has. This is episode 25, and since we didn't do one last week. Oh yeah. 48, plus Lucero and Joe had one, so like 50. Yeah, Hollywood producers, hit us up. Or no, this is episode 26. This is. We've been doing the podcast for half a year now. I know, it's yeah. weird. I guess technically half a year last week, because we skipped that one week. Ah, uh, yes. But. But I mean, that's, that's crazy, but, man. Yeah, fuck. Well, time flies when you're sucking dick. It's true. Ugh. All right. Are you ready to talk about Bicycle Thieves by Vittorio? What is his last name? I don't. Know. Hold on. I'll figure it out. 1948. Uh, Part of the Italian neorealism movement, Vittorio De Sica. Ah. Starring Lombardo Maggiolani and Enzo Stallion. It's a, it's a nice little Italian uh, rhythm you got going there. Thanks. Um, yeah. I didn't like this movie. You didn't? No. I was so surprised. I was expecting to. I didn't, like, hate it. I didn't dislike it. I just, yeah. I wasn't feeling it. I, I'm kind of on the same page as you. I think I based kind of on off your delivery. I think I probably liked it a little more than you did. But, um, yeah, this movie's got, like, such uh, cult status around it. I've always heard it in such high regard. And I watched it. I'm like, oh, that was a lot simpler and kind of more vanilla than I thought it was going to be. But I thought it was, like, an enjoyable little movie. It's like the... I think most people like it because it's part of the Italian... Uh, I think it's called the Neorealist Movement. Mm. And that was pretty much post-war when Italy was in a Great Depression. And they were using a lot of films about the working class, um, about just regular people using regular people. Like, most actors in, like, this era were just random people. The main character in this movie, he was like a not, he was, I think, a factory worker, and he did a little acting on the side. Okay. But, and I get it, I love, I love that thing, but it's just, this movie didn't work for me. I got the themes, I get what it's saying. Yeah. I just don't know if they executed it very well, I, which is a shame because there are parts of it that I absolutely loved, which I guess we'll talk about. Yeah. Go ahead and tell us the story of this film. Yeah. Um, bicycle? No bicycle? Almost bicycle? Yeah, it's, Gone. it's basically about a guy who... Um, his name's Ricci? Ricci. Ricci. Um, so this guy named... Antonio Ricci. Yeah, he's part of like this program where like people get work. Yeah, it's just for unemployed. It's like an yeah. unemployment office, mm-hmm. pretty much. Um... And the movie starts off with him getting a job, but under one stipulation, he needs his bicycle. And uh, surprise, surprise, he pawned his bicycle because he's poor and he needs to feed his family. Yeah. So he's like, ah, fuck, we'll sell our bed sheets and uh, we'll go and we'll get this bicycle back. So they do. Um, And they get the bicycle back and he's super happy. He gets the job. He takes his son to work and his son, I swear, this is where I got the idea for my movie because I'm like, this is like a 45-year-old like mechanic yeah, in the like body a, of a specifically like, like the boy. first scene that he's yes. like, he's like, what are you doing? I would have I would have said something. <laughs> <laughs> like it's pretty great. Like I found it very humorous and they like stick sandwiches in their like shirt pockets as they like ride the bike to work and I was like Oh, man, this is nice. I wish that, like, we lived in an area that was friendlier to bike riders. Um, well, also, like, this movie, there's not a lot of cars in a lot of the places true. they're going. I just wish that we lived in a nice little bicycle world. We would do one... No, thank you. You want some shredded cheese? No, I'm not a big cheese fan. Um, but, yeah. So... 
Yeah, so basically he gets his bicycle. We find out that his wife, like, also goes to, like, this... Pays, like, this religious woman for, like, some advice sometimes. And he, like... Yeah, and she's, like, a seer. And she's, yeah. like, well, they did it. And he drags her away when she's gonna, like, go thank her for this job opportunity. Which... Ooh, is this what causes the whole ordeal? Probably not. There was, a. Uh, this scene really subverted my expectations because they they set it up like pretty clearly that this bike's gonna get stolen right there. Yeah, I, and then I, he I thought did, it didn't. Thing. He's yeah. like, "Hey, random people, can you watch my bike?" And also, this is the first moment that I'm like, he's been super super careful with his bike this whole time. He was like carrying it around. He's like, "I don't want to put it on the ground." And then he just asks random people to watch it. Yeah, it just felt a little like that doesn't really fit with the character they just portrayed. Yeah, I I agree. Um, so he goes upstairs, grabs his wife, and then he gets his bike and basically, yeah, goes home for the night, gives his son a ride to school the next morning, then goes off to work, and he's basically just, like, pasting up posters in different locations throughout the city when his bike is stolen, when he's on a ladder pasting up one of these posters. And he chases the guy down. It looks like it's, like, a planned thing between, like, yeah, two Yeah, like the guy who was helping him is, like... Pretending to help Antonio, yeah. and he points. They jump on a car together, like the side of a car, and like leads and, him in the wrong yeah. way. As and he's like, "Oh, whoops!" And like before that, like as soon as he starts taking off, he like tries to block him and be like, "Hey, what happened?" But he just like gets pushed aside immediately and barely like slows him down at all. But um, yeah. So he gets his bike stolen, and he's pretty upset about it. He goes with the cops, and he's like. Files a complaint, and they're like, all right, well, you can go look for it. And he's like, well, why the hell did I come to you? And it's like, well, well you gave us the serial number. Yeah, you gave us the serial number, so we have it on, like, paperwork that if you find the bike in a shop or somewhere, you can call us, and then we'll sort the situation from there. But, yeah, we're not going to go fucking look for your bike. Um, which, yeah, I, I kind of get this one. Um, yeah, but they're also not even doing anything. They're just, it, like, sitting around. He's like, oh, is there anything new? And they're like, yeah, stole a bike. And he's like, okay, never mind, bye. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, so, yeah, so he goes and he picks up his son. He's a little late, takes him home, just drops him off immediately. And then he goes to back, like, to the place with all of his buddies who are, like, unemployed. They're, like, doing, like, a little show, like a little play. They're, like, rehearsing. Um, and he basically talked to the guy and he's like, oh, we'll go check out like, uh, this marketplace tomorrow where like m- your bike is almost guaranteed to have ended up. Hmm. And they do. And they like look around for a little while. The boy is almost like fucking picked up by a child abductor. Yeah. He's like, do you want this bell? That was such a weird out of place little scene. I, I get it. Like, obviously like kind of like impoverished times. Yeah. You have predatory uh, people that come out. It was probably trying to like make some sort of a commentary with it, but it just felt like kind of out of nowhere. It, it was, just feel pasted on. Yeah, I was like, oh shit. Um, so yeah, he uh, they look around this place for like hours. It seems they don't find anything. They like find one bike frame that they think it might be his, and they like. Bring a cop and they check out the serial number. Turns out, nope, not the right bike. But it's pro. They imply that it's probably stolen as well. Yeah. Because the guy's like, nope, not showing you the serial number, and he's like painting it. Yeah. Um. So then they like this part confused me because they like leave. They get on a bus and it seems like they ride the bus and go immediately right back to like this place because they like get on a truck. And it takes them somewhere. And then they, like, get on the bus and wind up back at this place. I think they just went to a different... Oh, is it a different market? Yeah, I believe so. Oh, okay. I guess that would make sense. It, they just both looked a lot alike. I wouldn't be surprised if they just used the same market, though. Yeah. And they're just like, ah, it's different. Um, so here, they uh, he actually sees the guy who stole his bike. He's talking to some old man. And the guy rides way too fast for him to catch again. Also, but he's just, like, staring at him for, like, 30 seconds before, and he only starts running after him after he starts riding, yeah. and I'm just like, which is fine, I get it, it's, like, shock and stuff, but 
Also, I wouldn't be that shocked if I saw the bicycle I was looking for. I would also, like, maybe you could make the argument that he was, like, looking and just trying to make sure it was the yeah. guy. Because I know, like, if I was in that situation, I would definitely want to evaluate and be like, all right, am I sure it's this guy before I make a big scene and chasing him down? Yeah. But, yeah, I agree. He kind of waited a little too long. Uh, so, instead, he decides to chase down this old man who he was talking to, who is just some old guy who wants to be left alone and go to church. He goes into the church, makes, like, this huge fuss. This is my like, favorite scene in the movie. He's yeah. just, like, running around the church. They're like, get out! He's like, no! They're like, you're being loud. Please, just get out of the church. And then there's, like, a scene where he, like, goes to leave, but he can't. And they're like, come on, come with us. We'll let you out. He's like, no, I gotta leave. And he's just running away. And it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> he's just trying to get out. And they're like, we'll let you out. And he's like, no, I'm gonna get out. <laughs> it's such a weird little scene. But he gets out. Then he hits his kid. Because his kid's basically just... You know, doing what kids do. He's trying to be helpful. He's trying to, like, evaluate the situation. But the dad's like, shut up! Antonio's, like, going... He's pretty much losing it. Yeah, and obviously, like, there's a lot at stake for his character. He wants to feed his family, but he hits his kid. It's not (coughs) a bad thing. And then the kid's like, well, fuck you. I'm just gonna... Yeah, see you. (laughs) See ya, unless you want to buy me a fucking mozzarella sandwich, which he does. Yeah, he's like, you know what? Fuck. We're not gonna find the bike... I'm just, we're just going to go spend all my money. Yeah, let's go, let's go get drunk and get a pizza. So we, so they drink some wine together. And, and they, there was no they, pizza, so, so they, they had get, to get mozzarella sandwiches. Yeah. And then there's like a scene where they're looking at like rich people eating and the rich people keep like staring back and giving them like snooty, like uh, turning their nose at them and shit like that. Um, then the dad basically like lays it all out. He's like, yeah, this is fucked. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, and then... Oh, God. What happened? They, like... I can't remember what happens after this scene exactly. Um, this is almost the end, right? This is this is nearing the end. Is this um, when he goes to... Oh, he, he finds... Um, he had talked to... Did he go to that... Uh, yeah, he goes to the place that the old man had said, right? He goes to that apartment. Oh, yeah, I think Because so. the old man had been like, okay, fine. If Here's the apartment. Just leave me alone. Yeah. So he goes to this place and he finds the guy. Yeah. Um, and he's like, I'll fucking beat the shit out of you, man, unless you give me back my bike. But of course, there's like a big, like, gang like, around. Yeah, the people. entire neighborhood comes and is like, here, and steal your bike. Yeah. And, and they, uh, the little kid goes to get uh, a cop. And the and, cop's basically like, yeah, none of them are going to, like. Yeah, the, the guy, the thief pretends to have, like, a stroke or, like, a, a seizure. seizure. Yeah, he pretends to have a seizure. And they search the house, but there's nothing there, obviously. And he's like, if you don't have any witnesses, I, like, can't do anything for you. He's like, God damn it! So, yeah, so he leaves, and, like, they all kind of, like, just, like, scream at him. Like, the entire mob of people are, like, yelling at him and shit as he leaves. Uh, And then he's pretty desperate. He tries to steal a bike. Yeah, he sees a bike, he steals it, but then... Then, like, a like, hundred people start chasing him. Yeah, because, you know, this pretty much, you can tell what his mindset is. He's like, God damn it, no one will help me find my bike. So, obviously, stolen bikes aren't a big deal, so I'm going to steal someone else's bike. But, of course, he does a really shitty job at it, and a bunch of people decide to actually help this guy <laughs> as opposed to no one had really helped him out earlier. Yeah. So, um... Yeah, so he gets, like, caught, and then they're gonna, like, fucking take him to jail. But the dude whose bike was stolen sees, like, the kid crying, and he's like, all right, I'll drop the charges. Just don't don't set a bad example for your kid, dude. Just don't steal my bike. And so, basically, the movie ends with them, like, getting in line. Him crying and yeah. walking to the bus, pretty much. Yeah, and that's where it ends, and it's like, oh, huh. Yeah, um, I, like like I said, I thought it was an enjoyable little little film. I didn't think it was like fantastic, but um, I I liked it. I like I wanted to, you know, I did. I thought that like the acting from the main guy who played Antonio was fantastic. I mm-hmm. thought he was great. I thought the kid was also really good. Yeah, but I thought most of the other people were pretty pretty bad. Yeah, and I think it's. 
I love films that use like regular people, like non-actors, but when you have such a big gap in quality between acting, it just is like oh, too harsh for me. I'm like, ah! Yeah. Um, and I thought the cinematography was really good. I thought the movie looked really nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, the music was like okay. Was there, was, there was like one scene, I don't remember where, but it had like a one of those like famous for the time like editing glitches where like you can tell like the real film oh. that they shot on like mm-hmm. kind of spazzes the fuck out for a second. Yeah. And uh, there's there's a scene where he like runs through a tunnel that looks really nice. There's there's a bunch of scenes that I really like the look of. But it's just like I feel like for this thing that's supposed to be an Italian neo like a film that's a masterpiece for like realism wasn't very realistic. Yeah. <laughs> like, for example, when he gets his bike stolen, nobody helps him, right? And when he's like, hey, thief, nobody helps him that time either. Mm-hmm. Which is fine. I get it. Nobody helps. But having such a drastic change at the end when literally multiple dozen people chase after him. Yeah. Like a giant it's a mob. Yeah. It's just... It just feels dumb. Yeah, and there's just, like, lots of, like, little things about it that it's just, like, it's got a lot of, like, little nitpicky moments. Um, like, fuck, what's what's one? There is one that stood out to me when I was watching it. I'm trying to think. I also just think that the film lacks any sense of subtlety. Yeah. In, like, any regard. Like, the themes are there, but they're also shoved so hard in your face that it's like it, it kind of loses its power I guess I feel like yeah. themes that are over like indulged in a film lose all their power maybe not all of them but it was, it was probably like better at the time of its release yeah but I, I can see that but I like, I just, I like more subtle yeah. shit I, and I feel like I think that the direction for the most part is good I just feel like I don't like the script of this film whatsoever. So I, I've added a bunch of movies from this director's like catalog to my watch list. Like I want to watch more because I feel like I would like them. Mm-hmm. I just don't think that Bicycle Thieves is the masterpiece people think it is. Which is fine if they like it. Yeah. I personally just don't find it to be a masterpiece. <laughs> I thought it had very good elements and also very bad elements. I would love I would love to see like this one I know a lot of like people would probably roll their eyes at this, but this is this is one I could see being remade because I really like the concept, like a little ninety minute movie about a guy who really needs his bike for work, who gets his bike stolen. It could even take place in the same time period. Yeah. Um, but just like by like a director who's uh, a little more subtle and uh, maybe a little better of a script. Yeah, you get a better screenplay behind it. I also don't think that the people are like this is the saddest movie ever. But no, the the ending's not even like yeah he loses his bike he's gonna lose his he's, job he's they might a, be homeless like it's gonna he's kind of an asshole throughout the movie too which makes I, I feel which, uh, bad, know, I, worse for his I like family. the character but it's yeah it's just because I mean he hits his kid he's kind of a dick to his kid on like multiple occasions he's an irresponsible father there's like that whole scene where like. He thinks his kid is drowning. He's like, wait here. And then, like... Um, he's like, ah, whatever. He's not drowning. Yeah. Uh, and then there's, like... He's, like, kind of rude to his wife. Yeah. No, he's kind of a dick to his wife. <laughs> Which is fine. You can make characters that are assholes. Yeah. But... There was... He wasn't, like... There weren't a lot of redeeming qualities about him. <laughs> yeah. And it... So it's hard for... To care about him. And I feel like it would have been a much better, like, kind of arc for him if, like, he thought about stolen the bike, but kind of maybe came to the realization of, like, no, I wouldn't want to put anyone through. Yeah, and it's not, it's pretty sudden. He's like, nah, I'm stealing the bike, and then he does. Yeah. There's no, like, there's no subtlety. There's no buildup. He's just like, I'm stealing the bike. Which is also fine to show, like, how, how quickly his brain switched. To like a survival mode, but then they don't explore that anymore. Mm-hmm. Which is fine because it's a short movie, but 
Like, the movie's just kind of fine. <laughs> for me, at least. Yeah, so. Uh, what'd you give it? I gave it a five. I gave it a seven. Yeah. But. I still think it's worthwhile to watch. Like, even as a five, I think it's, like, an important film. Even just for its historical relevance. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. I was pretty disappointed. Mm -hmm. I watched this with uh, my girlfriend, Ah. Hina Taya. She also gave this a five. Uh, No, she gave it a 5.5. Oh, okay. Anyway, me and Thomas' score together is a six. Yes. Um... Yeah, it's it's worth it to watch it. It's it's not very long, just to see it. And you might really like it. It might connect with you. It just didn't for me. No. Nah. Maybe it's because I had just watched a super epic movie. The Insult. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I had watched that before this one, too. Um, yeah. That one, that one was a much better movie, in my opinion. The insult, like... I wasn't expecting it to be what it was. Like, I, 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 like, like, I knew, like, what its roots were, but I didn't expect it to get so huge, I guess. Yeah. I thought it was going to be a pretty small-scale story. And then by the end of it, it's like, National News! The President of Lebanon! Yeah. And, uh... Yeah, like, movies like this are why I like watching foreign movies, because it can take Yeah, welcome a to learning about race relations in Lebanon. Yeah, because it can take, like, a country, like, I didn't know much about Lebanon before this movie. Mm-hmm. Like, obviously I knew it existed, but... You did? I, yeah. yeah. What? It but does? <laughs> it's one of those countries that, you know, I just hadn't done much digging into. Mm-hmm. And uh, this movie is, like, a great introduction to, like, a lot of the bad shit that goes on there. Yeah. Um, definitely, like, lays it out. And in a very, like, organized and dramatic, kind of, like, revealing way, like, if you had never, like, really been over there or known about it. Because, like, there's, like, a reveal at the, like, towards, like, the third act of the movie that I feel like um, if you lived there would be less of a surprise. But for me, who hadn't seen it. Like, obviously, they had been, like, building towards it, and I had kind of figured it out, but, like, the point in which it came into, like, effect for the characters in the film, I thought was, like, really effective. Yeah, no, this film's really good. I, I was surprised how much I enjoyed it. I thought I was gonna, like, like it, but yeah. I was like, whoa, this film's great! Mm. Um, so, it's about... I also, before you even get into it, the main character, I guess, there, there's dual protagonists in this, but, yes. um, the native-born Lebanese man I can't uh, remember his Tony. name. Tony. Tony and... Yes. Yeah, 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 something. Yeah. I don't want to guess, because I don't... I'm not familiar yes, with Yes, that's what I thought. Um, yeah. So, Tony is an asshole. Like, he's not a good guy. Throughout the whole movie, I don't think they ever even try to make him a good guy. But... And from the very beginning, they were like, he's the villain. Yeah. But by the end of it, I was surprised at how what a humanist like approach it took. Yeah, and he, like it, it never, it never excuses his actions, but yeah, it explained but them in a nice, empathetic way. All at the same time, it seems like as the movie goes on, he kind of progressively like gets over his deal that leads him to be yeah, like, like he, he does more. actually have a care, like a growth and I still think he's a bad person by yes, the end of it, but, but it feels like progress. in the future he might eventually become better, you know, yes. continue. But, uh, so Tony is a native born Lebanese man. Um, and he's, he's living, he's a, he's part of the Christian party of Lebanon, which mm-hmm. is a, a political party that, um, Either the current president is in or one of the past leaders. I think um, it was one of the past yeah. leaders. Uh, and they're super anti-Palestinian. Yeah. Because Lebanon has a lot of Palestinian refugees. Obviously, before we even get into this, this movie deals with a lot of race relations and a lot of stuff about Palestine and Israel and Lebanon yeah. and... There's, there's one Get ready point, for yeah, there's crazy a, shit. One point where they basically sum it up um, and put you in the mindset of understanding where the, the Palestinian main character uh, 
you see her, he, he's like talking to his wife and he's like, yeah, we're basically the, uh, the black N-words people of, of, the, of yeah. the Middle East or, and the version I watched it, they used that yeah, one. Yeah. And I was yeah. Like, they did. Which I don't know if like, that's, I didn't hear that. I'm guessing they have another word for the yeah. similar because I didn't hear him say I, it. I didn't hear him so. say it either, but the subs definitely did. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so. So Tony is working. He just lives in his apartment. He works at an, he owns an auto shop. Yeah. Um, and he like lives right with down. his pregnant wife. And one day he's watering his garden while there's a bunch of, uh, Construction workers working and, like, fixing a bunch of things on their street. Yeah, they're and, basically given the orders that, like, anything that's busted, they're legally required to fix it. Yeah. And Tony has, in his apartment, he has a gutter that pretty much just shoots out. Yeah. And uh, Yasir, who is a Palestinian refugee, he goes up. He's the foreman of this group. Mm-hmm. And he's like, hey, we have to fix this gutter. He's like, no. He's just a dick about it. He's saying, no. So... Yasir just has a guy do it from the outside and he's like fixing it. He's making it all nice. And Tony just grabs a fucking hammer and smashes the new gutter. Yeah. And this is after Yasir was already sprayed with like dirty water from this, this broken gutter. Uh, and Yasir's like, you fucking prick. Yeah. He's like, you fucking prick. And then he walks away mm. and then it cuts to like the next day and Tony's at, uh, the boss's place, and he's like, he called me a fucking prick. Yeah. You need to, he, I want an apology. All he wants is an apology, apparently. And Yasir's like, I'm not apologizing to that man. Yeah, he's a, he's a little prick. He's, yeah, he's a pretty stubborn guy. He's like, I'm not apologizing for something that I shouldn't apologize for. Yeah. You know, and I get it. He's just like, he's like, no, I'm sticking to my ideals. Yeah. The beginning of this movie is two characters that are just too stubborn for themselves. And then it escalates extremely. Yeah. So, uh, so basically, like, the the boss of the Vorman tries, like, a couple different things. Like, he brings, he goes, like, over to the guy's house when he's not there and, like, gives his wife some chocolates. And then, like, he comes back the next day uh, and Tony, like, gives back the chocolates. And he's like, fuck you. Think you can, like, smooze over my wife and, like, have her talk me into, like, getting over this? No. It, I want a fucking apology. And so it gets to the point where basically he's like backed into a corner and he's like, look, just come with me tomorrow and all you have to do is to apologize to the guy and we can just fucking move forward from mm. this. You know, turn the page and move on. So he goes and they get there and Tony is listening to uh, this leader. The this Christian like propaganda radio. Yeah, and he's basically like spouting out a bunch get of... Get out the Palestine! It's pretty yeah. much like... We're going to push out the refugees. And obviously he sees them. So he's knowingly playing this radio, this hateful radio station. He doesn't like turn it off or anything. Mm -hmm. Uh, So um, Yasir, who had come to apologize, is having trouble. It's like doing it. He's like, he's playing this fucking radio. And he's he's going to, but... Yeah, it's pretty obvious he's going to. And then Tony's like, see, this is what all you guys do. Yeah. He's just you being people, yeah. no wonder you have such a hard time apologizing to me because you're Palestinian. And he's like, then he's basically like, whatever, I'm just going to walk away. And then he's like, well, I wish that, I think the guy's uh, name is Asir? No, it's, um... I know it's Ariel like, Sharon. Oh, okay. Um, he said, I, Ariel Sharon was the leader of the Israeli army for, like, 50 years. Um, yeah. And he says, I wish Ariel Sharon had pretty much wiped all, committed genocide on all of you. Pretty yeah. much. He, he wishes that Palestinians were genocided. Pretty much. Yeah, he's like, I and wish you wiped all of you out. Punches him in the gut. <laughs> Yep. And he breaks his ribs. I'm like, what Two the fuck, Yasir? Yasir's like fucking huge, apparently. Yeah. He just, like fucking punches him once and he breaks Cause, two cause of Tony's he's like, ribs. He's, he's pretty, like, he's a, he's a pretty, good like, couple years older. Yeah, than he's like, Tony I think they too. say his uh, birthday and he's like 62 or something. Yeah, and Tony looks like he's in his life. Yeah, Tony's 47. Yeah. 
And he just fucking... And he's kind of a small dude. Like, Yasir's not huge. Like, it's obvious that yeah. he's worked his life, but he's not, like... He doesn't really have any muscle, but he it, just... It, it kind of makes sense once they dive into his character a bit more yeah. um, that he would be able to do that, because, uh... Well, you'll see why yeah. as we explain. Um, so... Yeah, he uh, breaks two of these got guy, this guy's ribs, and uh, this is where the first case happens, right? Yeah. yeah. So uh, Tony is, has to go to the hospital, and he's like, "Hey, you can't work." They literally say, "Don't lift any heavy objects for yeah. like a couple of weeks." They're like, "Do you want time off?" And he's like, "No." Yeah. No. No. So uh, yeah. So they have their first little uh, court date and uh neither of them get lawyers they're just like we just want to like settle this and yeah because uh, you see her like uh his his employer even is like he doesn't really understand the laws but you see her's like no nope, i'm telling that i'm guilty yeah i did and what the other guy's like i don't need a lawyer i'm right <laughs> yeah and uh basically you see her just wants to admit to being guilty he wants to just like face the repercussions because in his eyes he's like yeah i he did. won't. He won't apologize yeah. because he's too prideful for that. Because he doesn't think he did anything wrong, but he'll admit he did those things. Yeah. Um, but then the judge, the judge like, steers it in the direction. He's like, "Well, okay. He said something to you to make you punch him. What did he say?" And night, he won't say. Yeah, he won't say. He's like, he's too nice. Yasir's like a nice man. Yes. And Tony also won't say because he knows that. It's, it would make him yeah. look bad. So the judge is like, okay, not enough evidence. Dismiss. And they're like, what the fuck? He, and Tony's like, you mother, the Palestinians have you in your, their, your pocket. Yeah, ba- basically it's like that mindset where it's like the Palestinians are the oppressed ones. So like everyone will go out of their way to give them an easier path in life, which ugh, yes. a terrible mindset. Yeah. It's like, hey, look, they have to live in refugee camps and can fair, barely find work and were pushed out of their native land. And are land. also, like, insulted and by assholes they're like They're insulted by everyone. There's an entire party that's just dedicated. They're to, not like, allowed to go to certain places. Yeah, like, I'm like, oh, yeah, they're getting it super easy. Totally. Can you look around, like, the entire world? What the fuck? Yeah, but, um, so, basically, I... I think they planned on, like, leaving at this, but um, what ends up happening is Tony goes and decides to fucking lift up, like, a motor, and uh, he collapses, because obviously... Yeah, he has, like, something, there's something else wrong with him that was, like, exacerbated by the broken rib, so he pretty much has, like, a a heart... He has, like, a serious medical problem. Yeah, and his wife comes down and tries to, like, pull him to the car... And And this results in her baby being born um, a little premature, and on top of that, it's got, like, some medical problems. Yeah, and she has, like, a pretty much, like, a heart spasm as well. Just everything... Tony was an idiot. (laughs) Yeah. So, they get... He's he's having, like... It's showing him having, like, flashbacks. Obviously, something's happened to him. Yes. Which, it's pointed out at, like, the very beginning. It's like, something's happened to him. Mm Mm-hmm. But... Yeah, because so he's like crying. He's like, "I'm gonna go do work." Yeah, there's like that beginning scene where his wife's like, "Let I don't like this area. Let's go, let's go move back to like home where you came from." I can't remember the name of the place. Um, but and he's basically like, "No, I'm fine here." And then that's like when the title happens. But um, yeah. So basically. They're trying to shift the blame for this onto Yasir, and they both lawyer up, and they both seem it kind of. This kind of reminds me of a Marriage Story a bit because a Marriage Story has like this. He and said thing. the same thing. Um, because it's very much the lawyers kind of making these exacerbate people exacerbate the yeah. situation, and make it much worse than it is. Exactly. Um. So, yeah, basically, they both lawyer up, and the lawyers like suggest like kind of, like, wording things in specific ways, going against, uh, like, saying things that would make the other person look bad, shit like that. Yeah. And they're both kind of like, I don't know, I just want to like, have an honest, yeah. fair I'm trial. Like, I'm right, I don't need to do yeah. that thing. And they're like, shut the fuck up, let, I'm lawyer, let yeah. me win this for you. So, 
They go to court, and here we find out, oh no, their two lawyers are uh, father and daughter. Which, when this first happened, I'm like, that's weird, but I actually like it by then. I'm like, that was actually pretty good. It, yeah. I don't know how, like, necessarily realistic it is. I know, like, over here, that probably wouldn't fly. I don't know if the that would, like, be legal for, because it'd be, like, I don't, I don't know if that would apply to lawyers. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We should try it. Yeah, we should. Go, go pass the bar with your dad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> My dad could never pass the bar. <laughs> and neither could I. Um, I believe in you. Maybe if I studied several years more. No, I'll just do it. Yeah, I'll just wing it. Just I'm the guess. first person to ever, like, guess 100% on it. I wonder if that's ever happened. Probably not. Um... But yeah, so I don't. I really don't remember much from this second trial, um, other than that reveal. Um, so they it's a lot bring of like, in the man in the wheelchair. Oh yes. I don't know if that's the first person to come in. Oh no, first is the the man uh, Yasir's old boss. Oh yeah. Who yeah, yeah. Uh, Yasir had signed up to work with him as like a foreman for like six months, but he only lasted six weeks. Mm-hmm. Because Yasir had, uh, he like bought he bid bought a new. crane that was like German engineered instead of like Chinese because he said that China there's like some weird like kind of anti Asian sentiment in this film yeah which you know it was mostly against China manufacturing which is one thing like they never said anything bad about China as a people like yeah. Chinese people so I'm like okay whatever because I guess China does have bad products occasionally. <laughs> it's true. But it was just like, they, they said it multiple times in the movie. Like, you're, ta- you're, you're saying this a lot. <laughs> yeah. It was a little weird. Um, the movie explicitly begins with a little, like, disclaimer where it's like, oh, by the way, uh, the views portrayed in this film are not that of the uh, Lebanese, Lebanese government, government. <laughs> yeah. but that of, like, the filmmakers. Yeah. But Yasir had bought... Um, he had pretty much taken out a pillar and tried to rebuild it because the pillar was like... He had done a bunch of things that the boss had told him not to, but were much safer. Yeah. And he had even started, like, a health care plan out of nothing Yeah, that pretty much entailed the employees selling back some of the scrap metal to the employers to get health care. And... The guy's like, no, I fired him because he was costing too much. And I'm like, what? Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. So, and he, there's also, like, the bit where, like, because uh, he said that, like, he uh, tore everything down in, like, a fit of rage, which is, like, the first glimpse that we get, like, that this character has uh, some anger management issues. Yeah. Which becomes, like, a perspective that gets, like, kind of turned against him at certain points in the film. Yeah. Which we see in the next scene, mm-hmm. because it's a it's a man in a wheelchair who was from... Uh, he was from another country. Yeah. I can't remember what country, but it was one that had a, its own civil war with, like, Palestinians. Mm-hmm. Um, that was also considered a massacre by a lot of the other... They considered it, like, a civil war, or, like, a war. And most of the other world was like, no, that was a massacre. You, like, massacred Palestinian refugees. Yeah. Because apparently there was, like, a guerrilla task force hiding inside of it. So they're like, we're just going to kill them all. Yeah, just people, like, hiding but, in civilians. But uh, or... this guy who was a chef for the, the military... Um, Yasir had seen him, like, take a piece of bread from a child because the child was stealing it. And all he saw was, like, oh, this soldier who had just massacred my people is stealing ch- bread from a child now. So he, like, hits him in the back of the head with, like, a, a pan or something. Yeah, and it sounded like there were some other people involved. Yeah, well. but they... And they he wakes up, like, paralyzed from the waist down. Yeah, which that sucks. But, but I'm like, hey, you're in the military task. You're in the military. Even if you're a chef, you're part of the people that just killed a bunch of people. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So they they say that each of these things is first like shown by the the Tony's lawyer, which is the father, 
And he's like, these are the bad things. And then the daughter will come to Yasir's defense being like, this, listen, this is how he saw it. Yeah. Basically, like, th- showing each perspective. Yeah. And all throughout this whole thing, like, in the courtrooms, people are starting to get, like, riled up. Because one side, Tony's side, will be, like, all these native-born Lebanese people. And on the other side are all these Palestinian refugees. And and I, I found it very interesting that, like, the, like... Even, like, the Palestinian side and, like, the leftists were, like, anti-Semitic. Yeah. Um, well, it's not even anti... They never say anything about Jewish people. Like, they almost never say anything about Jewish people in general. They talk about the state of Israel. Yeah. Which there, I there, think there's are like some, different There's things. some people in, like, the crowd who, like, say some shit about, yeah. like, Jews. And then yeah. there's, like, the part later where, um, like... As this gains more, like, political traction throughout the news in the movie, um, Tony's house is, like, vandalized after, like, some harassing phone calls. And you see his, like, auto shop has, like, a uh, Star of David, Star like, of David, yeah. painted on the window. Yeah. And then that leads to a pretty interesting scene. But we'll save that for when we actually get to that scene. Which isn't... Is, I It might be around, around this point. Which scene? The the scene with, like, the Star of David on the window. I mean, I think that's about here. Yeah, r- roughly it is. Um, because without... By arguing against this Palestinian person, people are assuming that he's, like, pro the state of Israel. Yeah. And he's like, I'm not! <laughs> um. Yeah, and his judge keeps kind of, like, propagating and, like, making it... Mm-hmm. Blowing it out of proportion... Uh, Tony's judge especially. His daughter is basically just trying to, like, keep it grounded and real. But he keeps, like, just blowing it up more and more. Um, and, yeah, that happens with the star of David. And then um, they had heard that, it like, whoever had done this was on, like, a motor bike, like a moped, whatever. Um, and there's, like, a pizza delivery guy, like, driving by, and, like, just this big storm, like, crowd of guys just start chasing. It's like a bicycle thing. Yeah, just start chasing this guy, and he's like, oh, shit, so he's just speeding, and, you know, they're, like, right up on his ass, so if he slows down at all, they're gonna, like, tackle him, probably, like, beat the, the shit, shit out of him, yeah. potentially even, like, kill him, who yeah. knows. Yeah, like, he has no idea, he just sees a giant group of people running after him, screaming. Yeah, and then he... At, while he's trying to get away, the pizza guy gets hit by a fucking car. Yeah. And, uh... Yeah, that doesn't look very good for him. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, like, this is... By this point, everything's in, like, the national news and stuff. Yeah. Um, um, also, around this point in the film is also the time they both kind of reach their uh, rock bottoms because, uh... Yeah. Uh, what's... what's Yassir, Yassir gets fired. Gets fired. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because he's not supposed and to be a foreman for that. Like this, this whole way. this whole time, Tony's wife has been like, "Stop doing this!" Like the entire movie, she's like, "Why are you suing? Him? This is not a good. I don't do this." Yeah, and she's just fed up. She's like, "He's Fuck like you." He's like, "I'm just trying to do what's best for my daughter." And she's like, "No, you're like, not. I'm doing this for you and her." And she's like, "Fuck you! No, you're not. You're making things a lot worse for us." Because I'm pretty sure this film takes place in B- Beirut, I believe it's called. Um, yeah, and. He, he was born in another town that, and this is about where it comes in that uh, it shows the backstory on why he like hates Palestinian yeah. people. His lawyers find his um, like birth documents, and they're like, "Well, it says he's from here, but we see that he's actually born here a yeah. couple years earlier, and we can conclude that uh, he was a survivor of." Yeah, there this- was a like there was a civil war. Between the Palestinian refugees and um, the government of Lebanon yeah. in the seventies, and uh, his town was pretty much like got invaded, and, and most of a the ton of people died. Slaughtered. Yeah, um, some people were able to escape, but a lot of them, and a lot of them got separated from their families and stuff. Yeah. Um, we so see he's that. been living with that trauma his entire life. Yeah. Which feeds into his uh, anti-Palestinian um, mindset. Sentiment, yeah. <laughs> um, and there is a scene around this point because there's the president like gets them together. Yeah, like, the president's like, "Will you stop it? Look, you guys are gonna start a fucking war. 
Please, just, yeah. can you settle this? They're like, no. They're both like, no, we have the right to go to... And then, um, they, like, go outside, and, uh, they're, they both, like, park right next to yeah, each other. I think they just parked without knowing they were each other. Yeah. It has, like, a little bit of a comedy element to this, like, yeah. they're just parking and, right uh, next to each other. A fucking Yasir's car won't start. And so, initially, Tony drives off, but then he, like, quickly circles back, fixes his car for him real quick, and then just, like, drives off again. Yeah. And you can tell that this is the point where, you know, he's starting to kind of, like, humanize a bit more. He's yeah. trying to he's starting to see this guy as an actual person, see that they both went through their traumatic experiences and maybe instead of trying to push the blame onto one side, just accept that both sides um through history had like their shitty um histories and that they shouldn't directly blame each other because these two guys had nothing directly to do with these conflicts and that they should just turn the page and move on. And uh Around the same point in the film is when um, the guy who made the speech from, like, that, like, he was listening to earlier, uh, who he clearly, like, looks up to or listens to. Um, oh, he's on the television. Yeah, like, he's like, off. Yeah, he's like, look, it's time to move on. We made mistakes. Mm -hmm. Just move forward. And then, yeah, they go to court one final time. Um, well, there, uh, yeah, because yeah. it was Cause revealed they, in court and then, like, yeah. he did that And he had walked out and he'd been like, what the fuck is wrong with Yeah, you? he took his dad and he walked out because his dad was, like, His dad has a and, funny mustache. He does. He has a big um, handlebar mustache. Uh, so, uh, basically, before, like, the final, final trial in between, like, these last two trials where he walked out and the final one, he, uh, Yasir goes to Tony in his garage and basically he starts like, he's like, wow, you think that was it? Like, you think you made a big scene painting yourself as the victim yeah. by walking out? You know, your people, like half the bombs that were dropped on you didn't even detonate. You didn't go through shit, yeah. basically comparing traumas. And then he says something that he's, makes him snap and he does the same thing. You punch them. He's like, all right. I'm sorry. And then and he walks away. And it's pretty obvious, at least to me, at least this is what I saw, that he was obviously, like, egging him on so he would punch So him. they would be on even yeah. ground. Yeah. And then he could then be like, look, I'm sorry. Yeah. Now you but see then, how I yeah. felt. And he, and he gets that same punch. Like, he's done the same thing. Like, they're they're even kind of yeah. thing. So they have this final trial. Here's a smart man. <laughs> yes. They have this final little trial. And they basically, they're like, yep, yeah, this is not guilty. And uh, everyone celebrates. From, you know. I think, because they have three uh, judges. Yeah, it was it's two, two, to, two one. to one. Yeah. Um, I kind of wanted to know who the one was. Yeah, no, I kind of <laughs> liked that, that. But I feel like I, I wanted to know who the one was, but I feel like the other two judges besides the main woman weren't really characters. Yeah, that's one, that's just, one complaint I would have liked to see just a little more of them, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, but yeah, and uh, basically like, they go their separate ways. Tony gets in his car, and you see, like, he looks at you, see her, and kind of gives, like, a light smile. Yeah, they give a little smile to each other. He's like, <laughs> well, we're not leaving off on completely, like, bad terms. Yeah. I mean, I don't think they're going to go grab they're not, together. Yeah, they're not friends, but, but they at least they, have some understanding of each other. Yeah. And, yeah, I, I, I fucking really liked this movie. Yeah. I was, you know... Yasir was ob obviously the one in the right to me. Like, I don't think Tony was ever in the right, but I, I was surprised at how nuanced the film was with its handling of, like, race relations. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I I really liked it. And there were some really, really nice shots in the movie. There were, especially, it's like, a pretty movie. movie. Um, towards, like, um, actually, the very end of the movie, I think. I don't remember exactly where it ended, but I know um, after... The trial, he goes to, uh, back to his, like, town. He, like, lays down, oh, yeah. like, the banana fields. Yeah. Which, that, there was a lot of nice, like, cinematography when he's, like, walking along the train tracks and shit like that. And I always really, really like courtroom shots. Because there was one where, like, uh, the daughter lawyer, she was just, like, walking around and there was, like, a big panning shot of her, like, talking and stuff. And I always love those shots. Like, an argument shot that's, like, panning around them as they're arguing. Mm. And it was, I, I don't know, I really liked that show. Yeah. And I honestly, uh, I thought the soundtrack was really good. I thought that, like, there was one song, like, near the end that, like, did not fit with the scene at all. But for the most part, I really liked a lot of the songs. Yeah. 
And the, the last song that plays, like, when the credits start, is pretty bopping. I was like, dance, dance, the insult. Yeah. No, I, I, yeah, I don't know what I was expecting when I was going into this, but, um, yeah, no, I was very, very satisfied. Cool. What did you give the film? I gave it a nine. Nice. I was, when I first finished it, because of that one, like, song that I'm like, that fucking threw it off. I was like, maybe this is like a set, but no, I gave it an eight. <laughs> uh, yeah, the only real complaint is I, I kind of wish, it was two hours, right? Or Yeah, I, I think it could have, like, I, th- I think I could have liked it a little more if it had, like, maybe 20 extra minutes to explore some of, like, the other characters a little more. Like, I don't think I Tony's agree. wife had a little enough, like, screen time. I feel like neither of their wives did. Yeah, yeah. I always forget that Yasir even has a wife. Yeah, she, yeah she's Yasir's almost non-existent like except, like, the, oh, the kids, they're happy. Yeah. And I, I would have liked to see a little more from the lawyers. Maybe even, like, a, a small bit of, like, their deliberation might have been nice. And I, I would have liked to see more from the judges, too. At least, like... In oh, that's what I meant. I meant, like, uh, some deliberation from them. Like, uh, in the back room, like, right before, maybe. That, or even just some, like, shots where you, like, see their faces while... Yeah, like, besides the woman. Yeah, the, the, she was the only one that, like, f- got focused yeah, on. And I'm like, there's two other judges. Yeah. <laughs> They're right next to her. But still, I thought the movie was great. I just was like, oh, I wish these things were going on. <laughs> I also wish that the scene with the president, I thought that was a really interesting scene. And I really like the framing of that shot, the way they're like sitting. Mm-hmm. It's like, hey, they're on equal ground kind of thing. I thought that it was very nice framing. I would have liked that scene to go on a little longer. I thought they could have talked about a little more things. Yeah. It just felt a little like too concise, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. If, if you feel me, I guess. No, I, I get it. Yeah, but 8.5 together. Yeah. Great movie. Very good. What's your contemporary pick? Um, okay, Pierre's gonna love this one. Oh, okay. It's a little Dave Lynch movie. Oh, we're watching a David Lynch movie? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Called Mulholland Drive. Oh, man. I'm just gonna watch all the other ones first. No, okay, cool. Mulholland Drive. Let's do it. Yeah. You and your David Lynch. I've been trying not to do any directors we've already done, at least for my picks. See, um, I've got some directors that... Um, like, today, one of my picks, I was like, oh, we should watch this, and then I look at the director, I'm like, oh, this is a Kurosawa film. <laughs> See, I, I don't feel bad, because uh, Eraserhead is, like, episode five. Yeah. No, so we're like no it, it's fine. I, it's just a personal thing. I'm like, no, I can't do it yet. Um, before we started doing the director deep dives, I was planning on, I was like, all right, I'm just going to, like, pick a handful of directors, and we're, I'm just going to, like, space out their episodes one by one. I don't know if David Lynch is one that... I'll necessarily pick for a director deep dive, but maybe one that I'll save for, like, just I'll drop, like, a David Lynch movie for my pick here and there. I know for several weeks I've been meaning to do The Elephant Man, mm-hmm. but I always forget when I have classic. And ah. this week I was like, you know, I was thinking about a scene from uh, Mulholland Drive. I'm like, you know, I think I'll pick that movie this week. Uh-huh. So maybe in 20 more weeks I'll pick The Elephant Man. My pick is by a director named Robert Bresson or Bres- Bresson? Oh, he's been, he just popped up on my radar because I'm in like some Facebook film groups and I saw like uh, some like screenshots from one of his films. Do you know what film? I think I saved the link on my Facebook. Because it'd be really funny if it's the film we're watching. Let me, uh. There was only two options that I was really looking at that I, uh, you know, I'm sure a bunch of his other films are also amazing, but there was two that I'm like, okay, it's either going to be this or this. So we'll we'll see. We see. We'll see. We're checking, everybody. It's uh pickpocket. Oh, that was that was one that I was thinking about, but I I had heard that this movie it's pickpocket's a little short. It's only an hour and fifteen minutes, and I'm like, oh. I want to do. Uh, we're doing a man escaped. If you want to watch like, both, we might be fine. We're yeah, doing well. both of them. Okay. Uh, a man escaped is an hour and forty minutes. That was from 1956. It's about a man escaping. Okay. And a pickpocket is about a man who's a pickpocket. And that's an hour and 15 minutes, 1959. Uh, both are available on Criterion Channel and also Canopy, I believe. Oh, dope. Yeah. I, just, uh, I just signed up for Criterion. Nice. It's, it's great. It's the best streaming service, probably. <laughs> yeah, because there are lots of movies on there where I'm like, oh, man, I really want to stream, like, this type of movie. But, like, 
Amazon and Netflix, like, they have those type of movies, but they're, like, very small quantity of, like, the kind of movies. Yeah, like, there's, there are some, like, there occasionally Prime Video will have, like, a movie that Criterion doesn't, I, but I, for I think, the most part, Criterion's like, well, yeah. here's most of the greatest films I've ever made. Yeah. Um, I like that Prime has a lot of, like, A24 movies, though. Yeah, that's true. That's pretty much, it seems, where they go. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, so... Pretty, pretty good day, even though I didn't really like Bicycle Thieves. It was short. Yeah. There was, there was merits. I don't like it. I don't feel I wasted my time. There are some five out of ten films where I'm like, well, that was a waste. This yeah. was definitely not a waste. And I think that's important to say, even though I gave it a five. I thought it was worth it. <laughs> anyway, next week we'll be watching those films. Um, oh, let me see if Mulholland Drive is available to stream anywhere. Ah. Uh, yeah. Um, maybe on Criterion? Maybe because uh, it's on it, Criterion chain. Okay, I was gonna say because um, it has a Criterion like yeah. album release, but not all of them are available. Yeah, on Criterion channel. I know. I, no- I noticed that they have like movies on like rotation. So yeah, they they do movies. have like whoa yeah. movies that are leaving. I'm like, oh shit, I gotta watch. Them. I think it's just because they would probably have to up the price <laughs> just to make it worth it for them. If they had all of the movies on the Criterion collection, mm-hmm. I'd probably still pay it. But then yeah. because I'm like, Ha-ha! anyway, thank you for watching. Short episode. Yeah, Yeehaw. Tell, you, tell your grandma. Tell your grandma. Bye. Adios.